Well, welcome to Killarney and the Glen Eagle Rally of the Lakes. Not many people come to uh, Killarney in December. We're used to seeing rally cars here at Easter time, but it looks as if it might be quite a pleasant weekend, and uh, we'll see just how it goes. The Killarney Motor Club are very ambitious in putting together this national rally as it th is this year, with the possibility that next year it will become international. The okay, well, the very best of luck today, and uh, we'll be watching you very carefully over Thanks the next two much. days, Danny. Thank you, Robin. Bye-bye. Thank you. Are you ready? Pagan, number two seed. Um, you didn't finish last year, but the two previous years you did well on this rally, didn't you? Yes, we've had a third and a second, and last year we were five minutes ahead when we did an engine in. And the engine went uh, when you were well in the lead? We were well in the lead, yeah. Uh, how about this rally? I see you, uh, you're uh, thinking it's going to be dry weather, are you? You seem to be on intermediate tyres for the start. Well, I think that... There's so many mountain stages that it can be dry and wet, wet on one side of a mountain and dry on the other side, so I'm just gambling on the, that fact and using intermediates. Well, uh, when would you have a, a chance of changing them? Not till Ken Mare then, is that right? Well, we have to do Mall's Gap, which the first half, I'd say, will be wet, the second half may be dry. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, the tyres are going to be critical then, are they? I'd say they will be, with so little service and so many stage miles, yes. Yeah. OK, how about the long stage tonight? Uh, what is your feeling about that? I'm not too worried about it. I like night rallying because I did an awful lot of night navigation rallying and I'm not too worried about the dark really. What's your general attitude about this rally? Are you very confident? I'm going to try and just pace myself and get to the finish. And win? Well, I think if I pace myself properly and don't have any problems, I think I won't be far away. Good. Well, good luck to you, Brendan, and we'll be watching all through the night. Thank you. Paul Windsor, good to see you over from Liverpool. Uh, with, you have an awful lot of horsepower in that car. Are you going to be able to put it down in the conditions that look as if they're going to prevail here in Killarney? Well, I hope so. The design of the car um, is supposed to put the power down on the road better than a conventional car. And with these, we're using some new Dunlop tyres, and we hope we'll be able to do it. These last few outings you've had, you've had uh, so, uh, quite a few problems. Are you confident now that you're, you're getting to grips with the car and uh, with its teething troubles? Yes, we spent the last three months basically doing development work on the car and we've done a lot of testing. We've been in the forest testing with the car and on tarmac and we hope we've sorted out all the problems we had initially. How do you feel about the long stage tonight? Are you looking forward to that? Yes, I think it's excellent. Uh, it's a great opportunity to do long stages. Um, mostly the stages are very short, four or five miles, but to get onto a good long stage is excellent. Well, you've got a very good seating uh, right up in the top group. Are you very confident, do you think, this time, Paul? Um, we'll see, we'll see. It's a long rally. It is indeed. We'll be talking to you later. Thank you very much. Stage two, Borlin, and at this point, Tammy Fitzgerald is still leading. With this man, Phil Collins, in fifth position. Paul Windsor, with the mid-engine Escort DR3, was finding that the gear lever was jumping out of third. But James Doherty and Michael Curley are giving notice that they are determined to do well. While Welshman John Price was holding third place with his Renault 5 Turbo. Franco Manny demonstrates that he knows how to handle an escort. And Ian Corkle, over from the Isle of Man, <coughs> uses the three-litre Porsche to full effect. David McCauley and Elkin Robinson enjoy the rallying both inside and outside the car. And the only Scottish entrant is John Connor in another Chevette. Brendan Fagan's P.R. Riley Chevette shows signs of a quick patch-up by his service crew. Local men, Jimmy White and Mike Leary, wave their tail happily. While Trulli man, Sean Kelher, tackles the corner in his own way. David Gould is a bit too eager with the handbrake and several problems have been compounded by his co-driver Johnny Flint's sudden bout of flu which was to cause their withdrawal at the end of the first leg with only the Sunday run to look forward to. Englishman Peter Jarvis was destined not to finish but he ploughs a good furrow anyway. 
Noel O'Sullivan and Morris Nagel had fun with their old model Datsun 1200. But the similar car of Ger Brennan and Mike Coffey was about to meet trouble. Trouble like this and finishing up on a solid lump of County Kerry. Meanwhile, Sean Milan used the bank to good effect. But help was on hand for the maroon Datsun. Be ready now to meet the star of the rally and his vintage tractor. This farmer decided that pulling a car out of a ditch was no problem to him at all. But first he had to get the cap right for the cameras. Now lads, the bit of string is down there, so let's hook up. Now they're all ready. Action is about to start. Stand by for this exciting moment. Behave once. Come on, lads, again. And a third time. And a fourth. And a... it's shifting. Is it shifting? A bit more. Oh, he knows well what he's doing. And a bit more. And a bit more. Well done. So, with Joe Brennan back on the road, we wondered what his rescuer thinks of rallying. Oh, well, it's uh, well, it's not reasonably good fun, you know, if you can keep between the fences. And so we say farewell to the motorized Good Samaritan. I should make it interesting. Stage three, Healy Pass, and this hairpin was to cause a lot of problems. New leader James Doherty showed Englishman Phil Collins how to do it. Paul Windsor, while still in gearbox trouble, gets it right while Frank O'Mahony is second to Doherty as Fitzgerald retired on stage two. John Price takes two cuts at the corner. while Ulsterman Ken McMillan in sixth place uses the rear wheel drive of his XR3 to good effect. Ian Corkle's Porsche is not so successful, while Welshman Bob Fowden's bravery is not rewarded. John Connor keeps going well, but Limerick's Ken Lyons gets crossed up. The big opal of Theo Bengri proves a little wide for the corner. But really, Billy Daly, what have you done? This is where Jack Lyons starts a traffic jam. A traffic jam which includes Phil Armstrong and championship contender Ed Colton, both in Avengers. Higher up the Healy Pass, James Doherty, while now the rally leader, was being followed by Herefordshire escort driver Phil Collins.
The Healy Pass, like Mull's Gap, is considered one of the finest rally stages in Europe. Drivers are constantly struggling with the wheel and the strain on arms, hands and shoulders is considerable. The mind must be active every second and while there's a strain on the driver, it's even more punishing for the cars. This year's Rally of the Lakes was run in three distinct legs. The start was from noon on Saturday to 6 p.m., with a six-hour rest until the midnight restart. Then the 30-mile stage was tackled twice with a 3 a.m. finish. The third leg started at 10 a.m. Sunday with a 6 p.m. finish. The amount of stage mileage was considerable for a national rally at 340 miles. This is equal to about 60% of the Circuit of Ireland or the RAC rally. And on the Eagle Rally of the Lakes, the total stage time was about 17 hours. However, still on stage three on Saturday, Paul Windsor and Frank Rowlands in the much modified XR3 here lead Frank O'Mahony and Brian Curtin in their Escort RS 1800. Windsor must now be aware that Frank O'Mahony is pounding up behind him. Windsor, knowing that he has a problem, will pull in at the first opportunity to let the flying cork man through. This now is the chance, and Franco Mahoney goes by, Windsor proving to be a gentleman. This car of Frank's won the first Rally of the Lakes in 1979 with Billy Coleman driving. And in 1980, Gerard Buckley was the winner in a Vauxhall Chevette. The same Chevette won again in 1981 in Demi Fitzgerald's hands. At the Shebeen pub, still on stage three, Frank O'Mahony demonstrates that he means business. He's in second place, but only six seconds behind rally leader James Doherty. John Price demonstrates the superb handling of the Renault 5 is in third place, and David McCauley is fourth. Fellow Northerner Ken McMillan is in sixth place. And Ian Corkle here was still out of the top ten. Brendan Fagan, however, started to move back up the field with the damaged Chevette. Mike Dunian, with no third gear, moves over for Gary Leck from the Isle of Man. Well, John and Willie Moynihan try to find a new way into the pub. David McCauley and Elkin Robinson motor on happily. As do Ken McMillan and David Bow. It's Ian Corkle's turn to go through now.
while Bob Foden and Huel Thomas from w Wales make all the right noises in their Triumph TR7 V8. Brendan Fagan seems undeterred by the plastic windscreen, while Ken Lyons battles on well in Group 1. Welsh crew Andrew Stark and Hugh Davies are destined not to finish. while Jerry Leck and Martin Quinn are other overseas visitors. Mike Tunnion will be glad to see service at Kenmare to fit a new gearbox. Young Theo Bengry's really enjoying his first Irish rally. Sadly, Killarney Auto's Billy Daly will be another retirement while that other daily, Dan, is steady in his big dancing. It's hard work time for the service crew in Kenmare. Now, Lyons, how's it going for you? We had a small piece of trouble on Mal's gap there, a piece of dirt went into the main jet in the carburetor, and she was only going on one carburetor coming up along, but she was only firing on the two front cylinders. We dropped about a minute to equivalent type of car. But other than that, now we're getting back going all right again. It's a bit early to say how... Well, at uh, 10 minutes to 2 on a Sunday morning, uh, we are about to leave Cape Carney's and uh, go to Park Fermi, where the cars should be in about uh, 40 minutes or so. But we've just had an update from Brian and Liz Patterson, and I can give you the situation as it now stands. Frank O'Mahony and Brian Curtin with the escort are leading, and they are leading by a little under a minute from James Doherty and Michael Curley, still doing well. Third, English visitor Phil Collins and John Robinson, while in fourth place, John Price and uh, Derek Davis. Fifth, Theo uh, Bengry and Paul Watkins with the Ascona, and in sixth place, uh, also cross-channel visitor, that's Bob Fowden and Huel Thomas. Well, John Price pulls over to let Phil Collins through, and Frank O'Mahony presses on in the lead. Fatigue is setting in, and it is at this time that mistakes can be made. This is the second time that the long night stage is tackled, and the drivers are summoning all the concentration to remain completely competitive. Bright and beautiful, if a bit chilly. Stage 11 was Mall's Gap for the third time. As the third and last leg of the rally got underway, Frank O'Mahony had a 57 second lead from James Doherty, who was determined to catch the overnight leader. Phil Collins was a good third after Price retired during the night. But nevertheless, Collins was almost four minutes behind the second place man. Theo Bengry was now fourth. The big opal looking very good at this top end of Mall's cap. And this is Bob Fowden slinging around the TR8, confident of catching the opal. In a fine sixth place was Robert Mahari's Avenger, leading his class by over a minute. However, in seventh place was Philip Armstrong chasing the same class lead held by Mahari. The 
battle between Armstrong and Meharry was to be a feature of the Sunday afternoon third leg. David McCauley had dropped back to eighth, but still drove with spirit. Ian Corkle in the Porsche, who was just outside the top ten before Mull's Gap, slipped nicely past Group 1 leader Ken Lyons, who is anxious to win this class and get his lead in the national championship. Stage 12, Kilmackalogue for the third time, and after Mull's Gap, Frank O'Manley's lead has been reduced to 46 seconds by James Doherty who's he's really in top form. Phil Collins retired on Mull's Gap after a fine drive allowing Theo Bengry into third. But he also is under heavy pressure from Bob Falden. As Sunday's stages progressed, class positions were emerging. At this point, Robert Meharry was a class leader with David McCauley second in his class to Bengry. But Philip Armstrong was still chasing Meharry. Ian Corkle was keeping the Porsche well wound up, but was third in class. Ken Lyons was leading group one, but there was to be trouble for him a little later on on this stage. Sam Hawkins was not too far behind, but his clutch was starting to give trouble. On Art Groom, James Doherty is running ahead of Frank O'Mahony, although he's not yet retaken the lead. Theo Bengry is still third, but Bob Howden is in close pursuit. He was to have oil trouble on this stage and conti then continued the chase. Robert Meharry again with Macaulay following. The very rare right-hand drive Renault R5 Turbo of Pat Dillon continued on steadily in spite of some problems. Bill Murphy's TR8 was an early retirement on Saturday, but he was a Sunday runner. Still on Art Groom in perfect weather, the battle for the lead was the highlight with another distinct fight for third place. Ian Corkle was now in eighth place. And Mike Dunian held ninth and a class lead. By now, the Group 1 leader was Sam Hawkins, with Barry Duggan second in that class. Dan Daly dropped back a bit, but he was happy that he was going to finish. While Joe Butler had a big class lead. Another happy man was Ed Colton with the championship in his grasp. Dick McCarthy got it a bit wrong, but rejoined and followed one of the Sunday runners. Ron Neely enjoys his rallying, and he was a class leader. The rally of the lakes was coming down to a very close finish. James Doherty and Frank O'Mahony were very close together, and the first of the two service stops at Castletown Bear would be a short rest in a very tough rally. But Frank O'Mahony was still very much in business, and whoever won this one would be a very tired man.
Well, as we know, Ed Colton is a happy man, but Bob Fowden, meantime, had his troubles while in sight of third place. Third. We've had a bit of trouble now with, um, with the fan belt came off. The dry sump belt came off. We did three miles with no oil pressure. So, so uh, we don't know what it's like. You know, we've, the engine sounds a bit ropey. Then the next stage, the fan belt jumped off. So we did seven miles with no fan belt. So we cooked the engine that way as well. I don't know how we're doing. We were taking about a second a mile off Bengry, but um, the last stage, I don't know, I think we dropped about 30 seconds to him, so we might be in fourth stage, so I don't know, well, I don't know yet. Well, we went out, we made the tires, wrong tire tires, we went out on intermediates, and it should have been six, obviously, and uh, we couldn't get the service van in time to get him back on, so we only got on six on the last stage, and uh, we, we had about roughly the same time as James and that, but we were down a lot on him at the moment. We'd lost most of our lead, I would think. So you're trying to sort all that out now for the final run this afternoon? Yeah, well, we're on six now. We'll see what'll happen if we can, if we can stay with him or not. We leave you to your work. You're a bit... On Healy Pass, it was obvious that James Doherty was making his final play for a win. A sticking gearbox made changing difficult, and he was troubled by blisters on his left hand. Bengry was running second on the road, while in a tenuous third place. And here, Frank O'Mahony demonstrates how to take a hairpin bend. Robert Meharry was another man under pressure, and his sixth place was uncertain. Bob Fowden's bravery paid off this time. while Dan Daly was as neat as always. Michael Kremen was also a master of this corner. Conward's Mini was second in class. And Sunday run leader David Gould had to take a bit of avoiding action. Pat Doherty was lying fourth in class in his Opel Cadet. Further up the stage at the Sheepin, the drivers were tail happy. Frank O'Mahony and Brian Curtin. Theo Bengri and Robert Meharry moves over for the still fighting David McCauley. While new third place man Bob Fowden slings it all about. Mike Dunian keeps up this trend. while Sam Hawkins follows through. Joe and James Butler move on happily just outside the top ten. Ed Colton is full of confidence. And Dennis Turner from Nottingham is fourth in class. Ron Neely demonstrates yet again that he's the master of the mini. Jimmy White with a new head gasket was second in class and the leading local driver. At the end of 16 stages, James Doherty led by 14 seconds and was very confident. Frank O'Mahony was very disappointed in second place and Theo Bengry had been relegated to fourth by new third place man Bob Fowden.
David McCauley's lurid driving had raised him to fifth. But Robert Mahari and Frank O'Donoghue were about to lose sixth place and the class lead to this man, Philip Armstrong, co-driven by Frank Hussey. In Corkill was still eighth. And this is Fowden running out of order. Barry Duggan and Con Murphy were still going well. And Sam Hawkins showed a little tiredness. But Dan Daly just keeps going. Mick Kremen tries all the road. And Jeremy Barnes from Birmingham uses little more than he should. While Sean Moynihan has his own ideas about this corner. Conward in the Mini is still ahead of Mike Parks. Pat Doherty takes it easy while Fergal Eve and his sister Aideen are second in class in their Fiat 128 and they slip by. Art Groom, second time around and the speeds are still high. James Doherty goes through. Frank O'Malley now. Theo Bengry. David McCauley. Bob Fowden at speed. Ian Corkle. Sam Hawkins chased by Ed Colton and followed in turn by Dan Daly. Cod's head a second time around and the drivers enjoy the last of the bright sunshine. James Doherty powers on happily. Frank Comani proves yet again that he's one of the best drivers in Ireland and he hopes to have a more competitive car for 1983. Theo Bengry enjoyed Kerry very much and will be back in Ireland very soon. Ian Corkle thrilled the crowds with his Porsche. And Sam Hawkins and Sean Hanley could see the championship within their grasp. With two more stages to go, James Doherty could almost taste victory. These next two stages, don't worry, you are 14 seconds uh, ahead at the moment. That's right. Well, you know, we've been taking a few seconds uh, off, as I said earlier, in the daylight. And I think we'll have enough of daylight to take a few more on Tim Healy. And Mardis, and we'll just, we took time off from in the dark in Mardis last night, so we'll just play it, you know, keep on the pace. You're licking your lips and got everything sorted out for you? Well, I think so. My that's my navigator's job, really, not mine, but I think that's sort of the way it looks. Well, we know by 8 o'clock exactly what the situation is. Sorry, I'm speaking here. Uh, we know, as I say, round about 8 o'clock exactly what the situation is. But those of you who are here, I think you ought to give James Doherty from Limerick a good big cheer, because it looks as if he's about as one the Glen Eagle Rally of the Lakes for 1982. There's 36 seconds going into the last stage, and I think we've taken time off him along with that. Good, so that's very satisfactory for you. James has had a rotten year uh, rallying and uh, everything's come right at the right time. Good for James. Okay, we'll be waiting now for the other cars to come into us in a moment. Uh, we landed very hard on a young pan at the groom stage this evening and we bent the front suspension and steering. And she hasn't been handling 
as good as she was since then, you know. But uh, other than that, we had no great, great problems. That was the only mechanical problem we had. Well, how has the rally been for you? Have you enjoyed it as a rally? Well, I have enjoyed this rally. I'd say, certainly say it's one of the toughest rallies I've ever competed in. Uh, the amount of stage mileage in such a short time and long stages, it's certainly tested man and machine anyway. Well, you really have to work for your second place, and if you look as if you're sweating a bit, uh, that was some heavy going, was it, in this big Triumph TRA? Yeah, it's very hard going. Too narrow for the car. Very, very hard going. Very tiring. Uh, are you uh, surprised with the result? Did you uh, imagine that you'd finish uh, in the first three? Uh, quite surprised. Um, we were doing well on the, on the Cork rally, and, and we thought we'd be in the. We were lying about fourth on that, so we we thought we'd like. We wanted to finish in the top five. It's what we wanted to do. First time, second time over here. Come out and then it's all over. Bar the shouting. The thousand pounds first prize, of course, has gone to James Doherty and Michael Curley in the Chevette HSR. Fifty-eight seconds behind were Frank O'Mahony and Brian Curtin, the Caltrain sponsored escort. Third were Bob Fowden and Huell Thomas in the Triumph TR7 V8, the first overseas crew home. Sam Hawkins won the Group 1 section, co-driven by Sean Hanley, and pinched the class win in the championship. Mike Parks and John O'Reilly from Sligo won the small class in their VW Polo. Tom Brown, Robin Rhodes, the voice of Irish motorsport, we've had great fun in this rally, but time co comes that we have to go, and I'm on my way now, so good luck.